everyone, welcome back to another Handyman University video. My name is Brennan, today we're going to be talking about the importance of specializing within your handyman business. So, you have your handyman business for several reasons. Usually, you like being able to do different stuff every day, you have a wide skill set, and you just have lots to offer, right? Well, today's video, I'm going to be talking about why you might want to look into kind of narrowing down your services. I mean, Handyman's a pretty broad term, like some guys are more mechanical, some are more carpentry based, some will do like painting, flooring, I don't know, right? Like lots of people have different skills and then like a lot of people will dabble in other stuff like, you know, maybe you do electrical work, but you call yourself a handyman, but you can do like some plumbing. Anyways, you get the idea, you guys all know. So what you want to do is what I suggest, what I've done is pick in this case, for me, I've picked, I believe, I think like seven, eight different services um, to specialize in. And that's like pretty much the core of what I offer. Like I pretty much won't branch too much outside of that. So for me, that is pressure washing, interior, exterior, interior, exterior painting, um, deck staining and house staining kind of goes there. Um, junk removal, odd jobs, and some light landscaping. And that is pretty much about all that we offer at this point, which does cover a lot, don't get me wrong, right? Like that is a lot and eventually we're gonna narrow down even more. Um, this is just a start for now as we keep continue building market share and get more customers. Right now we kinda need some of the other jobs to kind of fill in our time. Um, but anyway, so the, the real way that you're gonna actually make a lot of profit and potentially grow your handyman business at some point is by specializing and limiting your services. So the problem is when you offer all these different services, you're not exactly getting any systems down or anything to do those services. So for example, someone one week calls you to build a chicken coop. Okay, great, you can do that. You knock it out, but it's gonna take you a while to figure out the estimate because you've never done this before. You gotta figure out designs, you gotta do all this stuff, right? Well then the next problem is the next week, someone's like, okay, come and paint my house. Well, okay. Yeah, sure. You can paint, you do all this stuff. Now you got to figure out how to do all this. Whereas if you only offer a certain amount of services, select a few, you can get really good at doing estimates. You can make standards. So if you figure out that you need to charge this much per square feet to power wash a house or to paint a house or whatever, however you do your systems, it allows you to make systems. That's really the gist of it. It makes you um, able to make things, system systematize it, move smoothly and quickly. So your estimates take less time you get more accurate pricing, you'll be more profitable because you're going to get really good at doing those jobs. You're going to show up on site and automatically in your mind, you're going to know, okay, this job's five grand. Like you already know you're not going to say that to the customer, but you already know the answer. And so it just makes estimating all that much more um, faster and, and like I said, more profitable. So on top of that, you're going to, you're going to get really good at those services that you offer, right? So if you are only painting all the time and doing odd jobs, well, generally things repeat so yeah you're gonna get the one off here here or there thing but generally all painting like once you get it down you can you can do you can paint anything once you need. it's really all about the products and uh, odd jobs kind of repeat as well so you kind of just learn the things and you get really fast at them which makes you more efficient which drives profits up because especially if you're charging per job like you should be you're gonna get that job done faster be able to charge more because you're really professional do a really good job Blah, blah, blah. You guys get it. So that's kind of the main reason also for scaling your business. So if you want to scale a business in handyman, it's very difficult because here's the problem. Anybody that is actually really good at doing handyman jobs, one, why aren't they going to start their own handyman business and why are they going to work for you? Now, some people will be like, well, okay. Some people don't, they're not good at business, so they can do the work, but they're not good at business. So you can get those guys, but they're going to want a decent amount of money and it can just get kind of hard. So what you can do is if you have a certain amount of skills, you need to get really good at those, like I said, make systems, and then you can train those people. So you don't necessarily have to hire someone that's been working for 30 years in the trades, can do everything, because those guys are gonna demand a high a high wage, which is good, I like pay people, right? But if you're just starting to grow, like get going, um, sometimes you can't really afford to pay people a lot of money. And like like I'm saying, don't, don't rob the guy, but, or girl, whatever, but, um, yeah, so you, this allows you to, and it gives you more of a range of employees too. You don't have to look for that 30 year experienced guy that can do everything. Right. Which is a major example kind of out there, but, uh, yeah, this allows you to train the pizza guy. 
pizza delivery guy that's never picked up a hammer in his life to, okay, here's how we do this job every single time, right? Like if we paint this, we're going to use this product, this product, this product. Here's the steps. Boom, 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 boom. You can teach them how to do that. And then they will be able to replicate that process every single time and eventually take that and train the next person. So really all this does is it gives your business kind of a, a solid direction. We're heading this way every single time. We're doing this every time. And it just makes things really easy, gets things flowing. And um, I think it's really important for handyman business. Like, like I said, I started out doing anything and everything that came up. And even still, like I'll now I pick and choose a little bit more. If I want to do something, I'll be like, yep. Otherwise, it's also a good way. <laughs> you know, we all have those jobs that come up don't really want to do it. You get like something weird and you could be like, well, those are the ones you send out a freaking ridiculous price. Hope they don't pick it. If they do, well, okay, the money's going to be worth the hassle or whatever. Now it gives you kind of a thing where if something comes up, you can be like, sorry, that's not, that's not a job we do. And you can, you can, I mean, you could have said that before, but you can kind of gives you a little out there too. But um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of my points about it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, maybe tell me what services you guys offer. If you found this for your guys' business, I just definitely have been more profitable doing the select services. And it kind of goes back to the 80, 20 rule, which again is 20% of your customers is giving you 80% of your revenue. And you can kind of switch that around too, where 20% of your work is, is, um, giving you 80% of your profits which found I found for our business where painting is by far literally probably 80% of the work we do is painting. And it just happens to be that way. But as a return, which we happen to like painting, so it works out and it's very profitable for us. We've gotten really fast, efficient, gotten the bids like spot on now. It's all been going really well. So that kind of runs into, well, why don't you just start a painting company? Thinking about doing that, um, I did it before and I stopped it. Problem was, I just got bored of just painting every day and I like that variety. So might be doing both at some point, um, but I need to just, you don't want to spread yourself too thin either. So anyways, I'm rambling. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>